Good evening, and we would like to welcome you once again to our midweek study at Hope Baptist Church of Pineville, where yours truly serves as the under shepherd. We thank you for joining us once again as we come together in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and we pray that God is continuing to richly bless you and that you are staying safe and God is allowing you to trust him as we navigate through these challenging times. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, as we come to you right now with bowed heads and with humble hearts, we come acknowledging that you are God and you are God all by yourself and besides you there is none other. You are the creator and the sustainer of the universe. The earth is yours, the fullness thereof, the world and all that dwell therein. Father, we just come thanking you for another day and for all the blessings that you have so graciously bestowed upon us. Not because of our goodness, but because of your grace and because of your mercy. Father, we thank you for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who paid the ultimate sacrifice so that we might have a right to eternal life. We thank you that he shed his precious blood for the forgiveness of our sins. And standing on that sacrifice, we come to you right now confessing that we have sinned and come short of your glory. And as we repent of our sins, we ask that you will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Heavenly Father, we come praying for our nation right now that you will reign supreme in America, Heavenly Father. We pray for our president and vice president and their families. We pray for our Congress, the Supreme Court, and governors and mayors and their families and all of those who you have appointed to be in positions of leadership that you will guide their hearts and guide their minds in your will and your word and in your way. Father, we thank you for those who serve on the front lines, our active military, our law enforcement, first responders, EMTs, firefighters, all of those, God, who run toward those things that most of us would run away from, that you will keep them safe, keep them in your care. Father, we continue to lift up those who are affected by natural disasters, whether it be fires, whether it be hurricanes, whether it be anything that has caused them to be displaced or caused them to suffer loss, that you will continue to watch over them and bless them and keep them in your care. Father, we pray for those who have been affected by the pandemic, those who are being affected by the pandemic, and we pray in advance for those who may still be affected by it. And even as we go into the time of year where we go into flu season, that you will just continue to watch over us, Father, the, the doctors, the nurses, the healthcare professionals, again, those who are on the front lines, Father, of fighting the pandemic and those other things that they have to deal with, that you will strengthen them and equip them to do what you would have them to do. Lord, we pray for our churches throughout this land and throughout this world, for men and women of God who you have ordained to proclaim your word, for those members who you have given gifts and placed in your body. Father, that we will come together as one, proclaiming the good news of Jesus Christ, letting men, women, boys, and girls know that they have a soul to save and a God to glorify. We pray for those who are sick, those who are shut in, those who are locked behind prison bars, that you will comfort them as they're going through. And now as we come with the word, Heavenly Father, we pray that it will be nothing of ourselves, but that your Holy Spirit will lead, guide, and direct. 
that your word will go forth, not returning to your void and accomplishing that which you please. And through it all, Father, that you will receive the glory, the honor, and the praise. And if there's anything we fail to ask, we pray in the name of Jesus that you fail not to grant. We ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Again, I bid you good evening and thank you for joining us once again for our midweek Bible study. We will be coming this evening from Paul's letter to the Romans, the 12th chapter, Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2, very familiar passages. Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. In the King James Version of God's Word, we find these words written. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Verse 2, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And our focus is on that second verse, which says, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Conformed or transformed? Conformed or transformed? The other day I was reflecting on this election season and how there are so many people who have such strong opinions one way or the other. There are those people who say, if you vote for this candidate, then you're not a Christian. Or if you vote for that candidate, then you are not within the will of God. But my thought process as I thought about these things and the Lord just whispered this, these verses into my spirit as to how we should conduct ourselves in this not only in this election season but every day of our lives because a lot of people who are making declarations about how our vote is a reflection of our Christianity begs the question, is that statement truly based upon the word and the will of God? Or is that statement based upon the whims of our society? As a church, we should be the ones who are impacting the world to look more like the church as opposed to the other way around. In other words, the church should be shaping the values of the society rather than the society shaping the values of the church. So when we look at this, Paul is telling us that in order to do the will of God, first we must present ourselves as a living sacrifice that is set apart and acceptable unto him. Not acceptable to Republicans, not acceptable to Democrats, but acceptable unto God. And it just makes sense, Paul says. Intellectually, it's the reasonable things to think to do in light of everything that God has done for us. The least we can do is put ourselves on the altar of sacrifice daily and live a life that is acceptable unto him. 
Verse 2, be not conformed to this world. I have a concern today. This is not a universal statement about the church, but I have a concern today that many of our churches, many of our Christian leaders feel like in order to be relevant in the world today that their churches have to be more worldly instead of our world being more churchy, if I might use that term. But Paul clearly tells us that in the church of God, we should not allow the society, we should not allow the culture to dictate our worship. He says, don't be conformed to this world. How many times do we look at a video that's supposed to be a Christian video and we cannot tell if it's a Christian video or a secular video. How many times do we look in our auditoriums and our sanctuaries and we can't tell if we are in a church or if we are in a concert hall, if we're worshiping or having a performance, but Paul clearly lets us know that we should not be conformed to this world, but we should be transformed, transformed how? By the renewing of our minds. Well, how are we transformed? Because if we, the church, aren't transformed, how in the world can we expect the society to be transformed? We're complaining about the fact that our society has gone downhill, that people have turned away from God. But could it be that that's an indictment against the church because we have been so busy conforming that we have failed to transform? Be transformed by the renewing of our minds. Well, how do you do that? Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in it doth he meditate both day and night. How do we transform? How do we renew our minds? We renew our minds by staying in the word of God. I'm not saying that we have to stick our noses in a Bible 24 hours a day, seven days a week. But when we read our Bible, when we meditate on our work, then we should be able to apply it during our work day. Apply it while we're going to and fro about our daily activities. We need to renew our minds. We need to let the mind which is in Christ Jesus also be in us. We need to renew our mind. Does any man be in Christ? He is a new creation. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. We must renew ourselves. And once we as a church are ensuring that we're renewing ourselves in a godly way and not in a worldly way, then we can begin to impact our society. It seems to me right now that there are too many in the body of Christ who are more dependent upon legislation than they are upon inspiration. But it's not the legislation of Congress, but it's the inspiration of the Holy Ghost that's going to transform our society. Yes, the Lord. Amen. Are we going to be conformed? Are we going to be Transform. And when we're transformed by the renewing of our mind, Paul says we will prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. How many of us are truly seeking the will of God in our lives? How many of us are truly seeking the good, acceptable, and perfect will of God in our society. Now, I, I, I may offend a lot of people here with what I'm about to say. But I have been hearing too many prophecies about God's will for the upcoming election. There are those who are prophesying 
that President Trump will get a second term. There are those who are prophesying that Joe Biden is going to win the election. Well, when all is said and done, somebody's prophecy is going to be proven wrong. Mm. So once your candidate loses and you have prophesied that he is going to win, then how now do you turn around and tell somebody the reason that all of a sudden you heard from God that one person was going to win, that person didn't win. So now how are you going to convince somebody that you were hearing from God? Uh, again, you might not like me, but we're on the internet, so you can turn it off whenever you get ready. But my prayer is not for Trump to win. My prayer is not for Biden to win. My prayer is that God's will be done. So, I, no, I can't say that God has revealed to me who's going to win the election. But I do know this much, that whoever wins the election, it's not outside of God's control. So as Christians, we don't need to be divided over politics. As Christians, we don't need to be divided over policy. As Christians, we don't need to be judging All right. one another based upon political affiliation. But you don't understand, this party does this, and that party does that. Well, tell me honestly, when you look at the whole counsel of God, which party is totally in line with the good and acceptable and perfect will of God? How is it that we can go about and we can justify one candidate's failings and then condemn the other candidate for his failings? And it's not limited to one party. Both parties do this. But we claim as Christians that we're discerning the will of God. My brothers and sisters, don't be conformed to this world. Don't let your Christianity be based on what society says your Christianity should be. Don't let your Christianity be based upon what some pollster says it should be. Don't let your Christianity be based on anything but what God said. My Bible tells me if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart, that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. My Bible tells me, for by grace are ye saved through faith, and not of works, lest any man should boast, but it is a gift from God. So please do not use my political affiliation to try to determine whether or not I'm saved. Because the Republican platform does not determine whether I'm saved. The Democrat platform does not determine whether I'm saved. Right. But the word of God and the blood of Jesus determines whether or not I'm saved. So let's not be conformed to the world's definition of what a Christian is, but let us be transformed so that God might reveal to us. Oh, yes. Hmm. Hmm. What is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God? Will you be conformed or will you be transformed? Will you react to the atmosphere or will you set the atmosphere? Brothers and sisters, as some of you have already made a decision in this election, some of you yet to go to the polling place, as you make your decision, be led by the Holy Spirit. Don't be led by NBC. Don't be led by Fox. Don't be led by the Internet, but be led by the Holy Spirit. 
And when we as the church decide that we're going to stand up for Christian values regardless of which party is in power, then we can begin the transformation that we so desire. It begins individually. But Paul is speaking to the Romans collectively. He says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, that you present your bodies. So he's speaking to them and directly and to us indirectly, collectively. But the only way we can do this collectively is to do it individually. So I can't talk about what the church is or is not doing without asking myself the question, what am I doing? What am I not doing? We have to make it personal. Conform or transform. Thermometer or thermostat. Brothers and sisters, the word of God has to be our standard. And let us come together as the body of Christ. As we are transformed by the renewing of our minds. To make a difference in this world. May the Lord bless and keep you as our prayer. Heavenly Father, again, we thank you for all of your manifold blessings. Father, that you will continue to speak to us by your Holy Spirit. That we will continue to meditate on your word so that we will not be conformed to this world. That we will not be tossed to and fro by every wind and doctrine. But we will be rooted and grounded in your word. So that we might be transformed by the renewing of our minds. And Father, your word tells us, when Jesus gave the model prayer, he said, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So Father, even as Jesus said in the Garden of Gethsemane, nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. Father, turn the hearts of this nation to you. Heal the divisions. Allow us to be able to disagree without being disagreeable so that we may truly demonstrate the love of Jesus Christ. That we will treat others as we want to be treated. And then as we let our light shine before men, they will see our good works, but give you the glory. Father, we thank you, we praise you, we adore you, we magnify you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. God bless you and be safe until we meet again, amen.